My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. You are watching 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at capacitor and capacitance or capacitance and capacitor. When you hear the word capacitor, what comes to your mind? Capacitor. Where are capacitors found? How does a capacitor look like? And how do we arrange or solve questions under capacitors and capacitance? These are the things we shall be looking at in this beautiful episode. Capacitor is a device used to store electrical charge. Remember, when you are dealing with current, we have the direct current and we have the alternating current. The direct current is simply DC. An alternating current is AC. For direct current, there are terminals, positive and negative. But alternative current changes the direction of flow. It fluctuates, it goes up and down. And like I told you, the bulbs in your house, electric bulbs, if you look at them carefully, it is actually going on and off, on and off. The AC bulbs, on, off, on, off, on, off, at a very fast rate. Alternative current cannot be stored. You cannot store AC. However, you can store direct current. A question comes to mind. The television we have in our home, the laptop, the phones, do they use direct current or they make use of alternative current? Ladies, and gentlemen, like I said in the AC circuit video, most electronics at home, they do not make use of AC. But the current on your socket is alternating current. There is a device in each of these circuits referred to as rectifier. Or diodes. These diodes are used to convert AC to DC so that it can be used by these electronics and so that it can be stored. In your computer or in your phone, if something happens and it shuts down immediately but power supply is cut off, all your data is supposed to be lost immediately. Everything is supposed to go. But the good news is, there is a device that actually stores charge. It tries to store charge so that as the power supply goes, some of your info will still be remaining. That is capacitor for you. It is used to store charges generally. Apart from storing of charges, if you look at any device that has fan, let's say your silly fan, even your AC, the fan in your air conditioner and devices where you see fans, it is the capacitor that controls the speed of that fan. Once capacitor is bad or faulty, you will see the fan will be moving slow and slow and slow. But by the time you change capacitors, the fan moves very, 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 very fast. Capacitor have wide range 
of applications and they are rated in farads. We have microfarad and other forms of farad, picofarad. But farad is the unit of measuring capacitors. Other functions of capacitors are to reduce sparks in ignition coil, in electronics to stabilize voltage, to make sure that there is no voltage fluctuation because fluctuation of voltage is definitely going to affect appliances. And capacitors are used to filter AC from DC. It can have a setting pass level. Now look at this carefully. If we agree that a capacitor is a device with two conductors, devices that allow current to pass through them. They are conductors and they have low resistance. So, if this is a capacitor and here is like a dial, a dielectric, which means a device or anything you put here in between two of the plate. It could be air. That takes us to dielectric materials. This in between two conductors, you can decide to put paraffin wax, like paper wax, or polythene, or ebonite, or glass, or even air can be your dielectric material in between the two conductors. You form a capacitor. Now, the capacitance of a capacitor is simply the ratio of the charge between the two capacitors, the charge of this, of this, divided by the potential difference between them. Once again, the capacitance of any capacitor is the ratio of the charge between the two conductors over the potential difference between them. Potential difference is voltage. And in electricity, current will flow from a place of higher potential to lower potential. If you have something like this, this is of higher potential. Current will likely flow from here to a place of lower potential. So, if you are solving for the capacitance of a capacitor, you simply say Q over V, the charge you are given, divided by the potential difference. There are factors that affect capacitance. This formula is enough to explain that C is proportional to A over D. C is capacitance, A is area, and D is distance of separation. So, capacitance is directly proportional to area. The more the area you have, area of the plate, the more the capacitance. Now, D is at the bottom, which means Capacitance is inversely proportional to the area. As you increase the area, the capacitance will reduce. As you reduce the area of suppression, the capacitance will increase. And capacitance depends on the dielectric material in between this place. So, the thicker the dielectric material, the more the capacitance. This is why if a paper is used as dielectric material, the capacitance will be more than when you use air as your dielectric material. And remember, in mathematics and physics, we don't solve with proportionality sign. We change it to equality sign and we introduce a constant. If you introduce a constant here and you introduce equality, this your constant, epsilon e, is referred to as your dielectric constant dielectric constant and dielectric constant can be in air or vacuum and it can also be in medium if we are dealing with um air we simply have e naught it's a constant which we shall be given in questions if you are dealing with a particular medium then you say the dielectric constant is e m of a medium dielectric constant is also referred to as permittivity. Now, if you are looking at the permissivity in a medium which is not vacuum or air over the permissivity in vacuum or air, this divided by this is referred to as relative permittivity. So you can say E R O is equals E M 
over him not. We shall come to this soon. And when you are dealing with capacitors, if you are using paper as your dielectric, you call that paper capacitor. The electrolyte capacitor is a type of capacitor where ammonia borate and electrolyte is used as a dielectric material. They will have a variable capacitor. In a variable capacitor, air is sandwiched between them as the dielectric materials. Now, in book or in calculation, we saw we arrange capacitors. We use diagrams. But in real life, if you see various capacitors, you will be asking yourself, is this what we are writing on the board or what we are arranging on the board? So, not a big deal. Let's see some things about arrangement of capacitor. And we'll also see how to calculate energy stored in capacitors. But we shall not do that or those or these in this episode. From the next episode, we shall look at capacitors in series and capacitors in parallel. From the next two episodes, we'll look at how to solve questions on that energy stored in the capacitor. Ladies and gentlemen, I trust you gain one or two things from this class. If so, I'll be very, very happy. Then the flash learner jump up and see how questions come on the capacitors. And don't forget to let me know how you feel using the comment box. Share with your friends and let them subscribe to the flash learner's YouTube channel. Take care. What's